y'all. I am Yasmin Albastami. I play Rayma in The Chosen. Dive deeper into the series and follow The Chosen on Hope Media Podcast and on the Hope 1032 YouTube channel. Hey, welcome back to Following the Chosen. I'm Ben. And I am Laura. And finally, season We are actually four, back. We can watch it. The episode three we've watched and we're about to talk about. And we've heard a lot of talk about this episode, arguably the most controversial episode ever, because yeah. we need to get to the bit where they kill Raymer. Right. And I'm wondering if this is just the most controversial because it's the only one we've seen so far. Like, given that this is the third episode of season four and so much more is to come, I feel like, judging by the choices in this episode, there could be more controversy ahead. Wow, and you mean death controversy? Maybe. I just Killing think, off the okay, characters all over the shop. Potentially. Whoa. More, but more so that it's like, all right, they are deciding with this season that they, they're not holding back. You know, they're going to emotionally punch us. They may be going to, uh, in some of the themes, be a little bit more... Aggressive isn't the right word, but I just think you see things heating up. And I think this is probably the beginning of some more of that stuff for this season. Yeah, I just think it's bold. And and also really in keeping with what we see in scripture about Jesus, but elsewhere Mm. as well, that we should be expecting things, not, not just like death, Yep. but suffering and hardship. And we have been seeing that in The Chosen, which mm. is fantastic because it's being faithful to the life of Jesus, which wasn't all roses, spoiler alert, like in case you yeah. didn't realise. And so I kind of like, if that's the right word, Laura, right expression, I kind of like what's happened in this episode, mm. even for the daring of it, because yeah. The Chosen makers know that Raima was a popular character. Like They know mm. people liked her and her burgeoning relationship then almost marriage to Thomas. Like it was all going smooth sailing apparently. And then this. And that's real life sometimes. And I think that's why, you know, you're right in saying that they've done something good by doing this, which is hard to say because, well, you haven't done something good because this is horrible, but it is in keeping with what the Chosen have done all along. And that is making the things of scripture and these sort of quote unquote ancient stories seem more present more realistic and more human you know because it is true like in some of the in some of life's moments of greatest joy which for these characters you know their the proposals happening they're going to be getting married all of this and then life's greatest tragedy happens too we see that happen in life so i feel like the emotion and that conflict of dual emotions that is in the story of this episode is something that i think people will be able to relate to and yes kind of hold with pain but also look at and 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 this is kind of what I was doing in this episode too I was wondering what was Jesus going to say that was going to make this any better because you know that he wasn't going to heal her so what was his response going to be I'd like to know why you didn't think he was going to heal her but before we get to that we love getting your thoughts comments feedback on everything the chosen as we follow the chosen you're following the chosen we're following it together we love hearing from you your thoughts especially at the moment on Rhema how do you feel about her death should it have been should it not have been and also Jesus being there and doing nothing yeah it's kind of something like I feel like it's a valid reflection right like what would Jesus do in that moment what's biblically accurate if they made certain creative decisions in that scene are you just making it to Hollywood right like the ending that we would love in Hollywood is that Jesus would just be miracles on demand but that's not the reality and earlier in this episode too because This whole scene where Rayma is stabbed happens at the end. So there's a lot of things that play into how it gets there. And one of the things earlier in the episode, Jesus heals the blind man with the mud and the spit and does all of that. And people are wanting more from him and more from him. And he, at that point, is like, no, like this isn't what we're doing sort of thing. For then to come to this scene within the episode where he, Jesus knows something's happened and he comes back to see what's going on. I think that's why I, I, I didn't think he was going to heal her because for one, it's not pulled from a biblical narrative. So I thought they're probably not going to do that because this is an added bit within, you know, what they're kind of doing with the story. But I also thought given what's happened earlier in the episode, this isn't going to be like Jesus isn't, you know, miracles on demand. And we know that through prayer. Like sometimes when we pray, God's answer isn't yes it can be a not yet situation and I think that for me in that scene too as I'm watching you know the reaction of his of her fiance and the everyone around and all of this and for Jesus to say like the I feel like the hardest thing to hear from Jesus would be that thing of I love you but it's not time to have that feeling of God loves me Jesus know what's going on and yet it's not time that would have to be such a difficult thing to feel and have Jesus, you know, say to you. Yeah, and a powerful moment on screen, like has happened earlier in The Chosen, and now I'm forgetting the name of the disciple that lives with a disability. 
but we had that yeah, interaction, James. little James, little James and Jesus some time ago, talking about a very similar thing to the face of God in Jesus. Why won't you heal me mm. right now? Why won't you do it? Like you, I yeah. know you have the power to do it. I've seen you do it and I know you're going to do it again. Mm. Why wouldn't you do it for me? And it's very similar here. So there's already precedent in the chosen for this yeah. kind of thing happening. Also, as you mentioned, this is not a biblical character. It's not taken from a biblical text. Ramos is totally made up, which doesn't mean this is the inevitable outcome come for her yeah it just means that well they can play a bit faster and looser i think with what they do i think they are setting up for what's going to come later particularly with quote unquote doubting thomas it's actually a really smart way to inject drama and all Mm. kinds of issues and consternation for thomas into the show and where that doubt would come from because raymond's last words to him are along the lines of stay with him right like as in stay with jesus keep following jesus and you see what would have cause that doubt to begin to fester and that again that's something the chosen are doing like they're taking these things of scripture and giving us the human kind of context potential human context you know like we've said it is all stuff that they're taking and making up in their own way but they're going how would you have got to that particular way of thinking how would you have made that decision let's kind of backtrack to go what would cause that kind of rift and so like you've said that's what they're setting up here which i think is really powerful but also as well like it's interesting that there have been like those comments you know from some people maybe even yourself who think Jesus did nothing and I didn't see it that way I really saw like Jesus was no like for me I thought wow like there's again such I felt such a connectedness to this feeling of Jesus own the way that he carried the sorrow like to me it was in his eyes and everything where it's like Jesus felt the pain and he felt the sorrow and he was so he felt the grief of it and even Matt perhaps more so the understanding that he would have had of I see this grief but yet the right thing to do here or what I'm going to do here is actually not going to be what you're wanting you know like it's like I think Jesus carries the sorrow that we carry but he also carries something more because of the divine context for everything that he sees that we don't you know so I feel like there's a lot of that laid into this good pushback on the episode of the focus on Rama and particularly afterwards now people seeing it and their reaction to it is almost diminishing or it makes you forget Get, and I kind of forget when I talk about the episode that I, it's not all about Rhema. Mm. Actually, many things happen in the episode, including, so as you pointed out, the healing of a blind man. But also, Jesus' interaction with some Pharisees, which, mm. uh, as we've been talking about as this uh, season has been unfolding, Jesus is getting more and more intense yeah. against those who are in opposition to him. And for anyone who's read those sections of the New Testament where Jesus is described as saying woe to the Pharisees and why, and basically calling them out for all the hypocrisy and the ways they're misleading the people of God away from God, the way Jesus calls them out, when you read that on page, but then when you see on screen, there's a real potency and power that's starting to emerge in just how strong and confrontational these situations actually are yeah. and there's a moment in this and it's leading up to the death of Rhema that the, like tensions are starting to boil mm. I didn't actually buy too much the crowd jostling and trying to get into Jesus and I thought well, this feels a little bit too much like a TV show trying mm. to make this moment happen but what was actually leading up to what happened to Rhema I was totally into mm. but mainly because of where Jesus was at in the center yeah. of this saying this is who I am and this is who you are mm. and really making it blindingly obvious to the leaders of the time, yeah. the shortcomings of them, but also how angry and annoyed he and God are. And there, that's something I did notice in this episode, that shift in Jesus' tone. Like, I was like, he's getting really annoyed. Like, not in a, it wasn't in a, it didn't put me off. I just thought, yeah, you can see how Jesus would have been getting righteously frustrated. Like, you're just not getting it. And after all the things that he's done up to this point, and still it's like the Pharisees are focusing on the wrong part, like the wrong part of what was said in scripture. Like he, I, I can't remember exactly how he phrased it, but it's like they're focusing on being clean and unclean beyond what God's original intention for those instructions was. Like they've taken it to a point that's no longer helpful. And so I thought that was interesting. Like you, to me, you had all these pieces in this episode that finish with this big kind of climactic moment because we haven't even spoken about Quintus, right? And what leads, oh, yeah, all what that's leads going him on. to suddenly be like, you know, and freak out and commit this big act of violence in the first place and yes. how shocked he was at himself that he even did it. And it's like backtrack to the beginning of the episode. He's really annoyed 
unemployed, that he's, you know, um, the money that he's getting isn't working out, his books are in the red, you know, and, and it's like he's feeling this his power like slipping away and starting to become really like assertive and aggressive and needlessly horrible to people in that community, which then leads him to this ultimate kind of act of violence. And you think, and what was that all about? Was about his own you know, gradual loss of power that he feels coming and the fact that everything he wants to happen to the followers of Jesus doesn't seem to be affecting their commitment to him and everything like that, which I thought was an interesting reflection to take away from this episode just about our own anger, right? Like some of the worst things humans do are because of some root issue, right, around anger or whatever it might be. And so to see Quintus do what he did and to trace it back, it's like, yeah, we need to check our own attitudes and what the ultimate end of those kind of things might be. And it'd be great to hear from you all your thoughts and feelings about Quintus, about Jesus confronting the Pharisees, what you thought of what goes on in this episode, how it's handled. Um, before we wrap up, Laura, uh, you were also driving me back right to the start of the episode as you talk about Quintus. But before that, there's a flashback to King David yeah. and a period of remorse, repentance, grief that he's going through. And it's difficult actually to put it directly alongside what happens with Raymond and how we should or should not feel about it and what, whether we think Jesus should or should not have intervened. But it's definitely setting a scene of how you respond to not just death, but how you think God is acting in a particular moment and whether you think he should or should not do something. And as much as people are recoiling, I think, from what happens with Rhema and Jesus at that moment, I think the whole episode, particularly starting off with David and ending with Rhema, mm. is trying to force us back to something that the chosen creators, I think, are often overlooked for, which is, this is not just a depiction of Jesus in the Gospels, they're also broader across the Bible and they're trying to reveal biblical truths, biblical through lines, biblical principles that were before Jesus. They started before Jesus. King David's pointing to that. And in this instance, it drives you back to the big questions of suffering and death and God's yeah. intervention in life. And where is God and what's God up to? Mm. And even uncomfortably gets you back to the realization that is just throughout the Bible that sadly, with sin being in the world, suffering and death and hardship and struggle are real. And they come even to those who are God's people, God's true yep. people, God's followers who don't let go. This mm. still happens, including at times when you don't think that it should. Rama's a young woman who arguably had her whole life ahead of her. But Jesus at that moment of her death seems to be indicating that this was her time that she's going to be with God. Am I going to argue with God mm. at that moment or not? Yeah, it's tough. And again, this is why it's good to talk about The Chosen because they are prompting all of these discussions, right? So much for us to think about. We'd love to hear your thoughts, your comments, get in on this. And even I would be curious to know what your th thoughts are because as you bring up the King David scene too, that's one of the things I've been loving about The Chosen is that they're starting to give us the, these sort of flashbacks to different parts of scripture that are earlier, you know, than Jesus' time on earth. So I'm curious to see where they go with that. But thanks for being with us on this episode of Following The Chosen. We will be back next week. We're going to look at episode four. So make sure you've watched it and we'll chat to you then.